Hi there. In this video, we are going to start chapter number two of Robin's basic pathology. This chapter is about cellular injury, cellular death, and adaptation to various cellular adaptation to various stressful environment. So first of all, we need to understand two terminologies here. One is disease etiology and other is disease pathogenesis. Disease etiology refers to the causes and different factors which modify the initiation and progression of a disease. So in etiology, we uh, study different factors and different causes which are responsible to initiate a disease. These causes can be genetic causes as well as environmental causes. In pathogenesis, we study the mechanism of disease. In pathogenesis, we deal with how a disease is occurring and how it progresses. So basically, etiology is concerned with why a disease and pathogenesis is concerned with how a disease. So these two factors, etiology and pathogenesis, are very very important to understand every disease and to devise the treatment plans for various diseases. So next we come towards uh, various uh, uh, stressful conditions and, and damaging stimuli which uh, cell faces. So when a cell encounters a physiological stress, it adapts to the stress. It makes changes at cellular level, at organelle level, at metabolic level, uh, which helps it to adapt and survive that stressful condition. However, if uh, uh, the uh, damaging stimuli exceeds its adaptive capability, then there is injury. This injury is reversible injury in initial phases. However, if this uh, if the damaging stimuli is not removed, this reversible injury converts into irreversible injury. When cell is damaged irreversibly, cell does not return to the normal state when the damaging stimuli is removed. Next, we move here. Uh, we can see here this is our normal cell and then uh, injury stimuli came and uh, it resulted into a reversible injury and it's reversible injury when it becomes severe and progressive it converts into irreversible injury and when there is irreversible injury it ultimately leads to cell death and cell death can be through necrosis or through apoptosis. Uh, so here uh, comes etiology and etiology we are studying causes of disease which can be genetic abnormalities, nutritional imbalance, trauma, immunological abnormalities, infections, toxins and in pathogenesis we are discuss discussing mechanism of disease. This mechanism can involve structural changes as well as biochemical changes and these uh, lead to uh, molecular functional and morphological abnormalities in cell and tissues which lead to clinical manifestation of disease in the form of sign and symptoms. So here we discuss uh, different causes of cell injury. Uh, so different causes of cell injury can be hypoxia, ischemia, toxins, infectious agents, immunological reactions, genetic abnormalities, nutritional imbalance and uh, physical agents as well as cellular aging. So first we come uh, toward hypoxia and ischemia. So what is hypoxia? Hypoxia stands for deficiency of oxygen. When there is a reduced oxygen supply to a tissue, it is called hypoxia. And when there is reduced blood supply, it is called ischemia. So uh, hypoxia and ischemia are not same thing, they are different. However, when there is hypoxia, there is deficiency of oxygen only. When there is ischemia or reduced blood supply, there is deficiency of oxygen as well as other nutrients to the tissue. And there is also accumulation of toxic metabolites or waste products in the tissue. So ischemia is more damaging in this scenario. Next, come to a toxin. Uh, these toxins uh, also are cause of cellular injury. These toxins can be air pollutants, including carbon monoxide, asbestos, cigarette smoke, ethanol, drugs, etc. Uh, certain therapeutic uh, drugs, when taken in excessive doses, they are also toxic. And um, <clears throat> then we come towards infectious agents. These infectious agents include viruses, bacteria, fungi, protozoa. They also damage the cells. Then we come towards immunological reactions. Uh, these immunological reactions can involve autoimmune conditions such as rheumatoid arthritis, systemic lupus, uh, and uh, so on, scleroderma as well as certain uh, you know, immune reaction to bacteria such as streptococcus can also follow an abnormal route and can lead to rheumatic fever. Uh, genetic abnormalities can also be a cause of cellular injury such as Down syndrome, uh, sickle cell disease, thalassemia, etc. These are also a cause of uh, cellular injury. Moreover, uh, mutation in DNA uh, which uh, accumulate over the time and uh, can lead to uh, the uh, cellular death via apoptosis or necrosis. 
and further nutritional imbalance such as vitamin deficiency protein uh, vitamin deficiency mineral deficiency iron deficiency these are also all cause of cellular injury physical agents such as electric shock burns trauma these are also a uh, source of cellular injury and aging is also a source of cellular injury when uh, cell age they accumulate various mutation in genetic material which <clears throat> lead to irreversible cellular injury over time and lead to cellular death so next we come toward reversible cell injury so reversible cell injury is a type of cell injury in which deranged function and morphology of injured cell can return to the normal when damaging stimulus is removed so in reversible injury as long as damaging stimuli is present cell is in injured state but when damaging stimuli is removed cell recovers towards the normal function However, if uh, uh, the damaging stimuli is not removed, then a certain point comes after which cell cannot recover to the normal function, no matter damaging stimuli is present or not. This state is called irreversible cellular injury. So, uh, common manifestation of reversible cell injury is swelling. Cell becomes swollen and uh, there is also accumulation of lipids in the various cellular organelles and cytoplasm, especially uh, in those cells which are involved in lipid metabolism such as liver cells so uh, here we uh, uh, discuss the morphology of reversible cellular injury the common manifestation of reversible cellular injury is cellular swelling when cell is injured the permeability of cellular membrane is altered as a result water and enters water and fluid enter into the cell due to electrolyte imbalance and there is a marked turgor in the organ as well as increase in organ weight when there is a turgor there is increased in organ weight the capillaries of organ are compressed as a result the blood flow to the organ is also altered leading to pallor and organ turns pale uh, microscopic examination uh, will also uh, uh, show certain vacuoles in the cytoplasm and overall these changes are called vacuolar degeneration or hydropic change uh, the next manifestation of reversible cellular injury is fatty change and this fatty change is mostly observed in the organs which are involved in lipid metabolism, especially liver. So in this case, uh, the cells accumulate various lipid uh, droplets or triacylglycerides or tags in the vacuoles which accumulate into the cytoplasm. This is fatty change. Uh, next in manifestation is uh, eosinophilic uh, cytoplasm and uh, next there is blabbing of uh, plasma membrane plasma membrane changes its configuration and structure mitochondrial changes occur mitochondrial uh, loses its function there is breakdown of uh, rough endoplasmic reticulum ribosome break away from the uh, er and there is dissociation of polysome into monosome nuclear alternation occurs and uh, uh, there is a shrinking of chromatin material all these changes are reversible uh, as long as certain point is not reached when certain point is crossed these changes turn into irreversible changes and in when there is irreversible change there is no point of return and the cell does not return to normal function when damaging stimulus is removed so irreversible uh, change is marked by three characteristics or three phenomena uh, there is inability to restore normal mitochondrial function no matter how much effort is implied when there is irreversible injury mitochondrial function or normal oxidative phosphorylation or atp generation is not restored normal electron transport chain function is not restored as a result there is no atp production no oxidative phosphorylation and eventually it leads to cellular death there is loss of structure and function of plasma membrane and intercellular membrane when there is uh, plasma membrane function is lost intercellular membrane function is lost uh, the cellular compartments are altered and uh, fluid enters into cell cell swells and dissolves and there is loss of DNA and chromatin material uh, which shrinks and later on dissolves so these are the uh, characteristic or phenomena of irreversible cellular injury which leads ultimately to cellular death here there is another uh, phenomena discussed here which is adaptation of cellular organelles it uh, uh, states that when there is a stress on certain cellular organelle it adapts to the stress for example uh, there is smooth endoplasmic reticulum this endoplasmic reticulum is involved in the metabolism of drugs certain drugs uh, one drug is mentioned here which is barbiturates which is a cns drug so uh, when there is barbiturates uh, when a person takes barbiturates endoplasmic reticulum of his cells uh, hypertrophy and when they uh, undergo hypertrophy they uh, increase the uh, metabolism of barbiturates as a result tolerance develops so in order to achieve same therapeutic function we have to increase the concentration of the drug 
Similarly, when there is a uh, hypertrophy of endoplasmic reticulum, all other drugs and chemicals which are metabolized by this system also there is also increased metabolism of those uh, chemicals. Uh, so, uh, here is an example of CCL4 which converts into toxic agents when its metabolism is altered uh, via this tolerance mechanism. Here is another example of phenobarbital and alcohol. Here uh, it is stated that phenobarbital is metabolized by endoplasmic reticulum and alcohol is also uh, follows the same path. So when a uh, person takes alcohol when he is on phenobarbital, alcohol induces hypertrophy in the uh, ER which leads to increased metabolism of phenobarbital so phenobarbital level in patient's blood decreases so in order to include uh, uh, achieve the same therapeutic effects of phenobarbital person has to increase the dose of the drug so main uh, point discussed here is when one drug induces hypertrophy of endoplasmic reticulum the metabolism of other drugs and other chemicals metabolized by ER also increases so there is need of increasing their dosage so it was all about today's lecture in the next lecture we will discuss cellular death and what are different mechanism of cellular death uh, apoptosis necrosis different type of necrosis and so on thank you